fellow students welcome to the session in this session you can see what is displayed poliomyelitis i'm sure that most of you know about poliomyelitis at least you have heard about it and uh, we all are very happy happy in the sense that i'm going to talk it more of theoretically today because fortunately this disease has been almost eradicated from the planet not that the virus has gone anywhere virus is still around that's why the constant vaccination has to be done but at least the disease is no more seen what we are seeing is the sequelae active form of disease is no more seen having said that it doesn't mean that we need to let our guards go down we have to be very vigilant because slightest of the opportunity this virus can come back and it has got some disastrous consequences on the functional uh, you know the outcome of a person functionally he becomes quite disabled otherwise patient can go on with their life very few countries um, in the world are still having polio but otherwise by and large polio is eradicated from at least from india so this particular topic we will cover uh, with etiopathogenesis of polio clinical feature diagnosis management and their complication and dr sanjot helped me in preparing this topic polio is an enterovirus infection all of us you know from the microbiology which is caused by polio virus type 1 to 3 and this virus you have to remember that this virus affects the anterior horn cells in the spinal cord so if you remember this is the spinal cord that is the dorsal root that's the lateral horn this is the anterior horn so this is the ventral root that's the dorsal root so anterior horn cell where your motor nerves start is this the where where the polio virus typically affects in the spinal form there is another bulbar form where the cranial nerves are also involved 90% of the polio virus infections are asymptomatic and a vast majority of the children who are affected are less than 3 years and it mostly affects the kids who are non immunized so it's an enterovirus rna type of virus and the most common type which affects the 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 humans is type 1 the most important risk factor is the lack of vaccination so we should not let our guards go down and the kids must be continuously vaccinated because viruses once they are in the nature they usually don't go anywhere they are just waiting for first opportunity to strike hard so what is the pathogenesis how actually the polio affect polio affects the person so it is ingested via the fecal oral route reaches the alimentary canal multiplies in the pears patches and then there is a viremia into the blood system it enters the central nervous system either the anterior horn cell which is most common and sometimes the brain stem and the cortex when it goes to the anterior horn cell we call it as a spinal form when it goes to the brain stem and cortex we call it as a bulbar form so anterior horn cells they get destroyed and patients get the muscle paralysis because it will typically affect the motor system and that is why in the typical polio there is no sensory loss it's always the motor paralysis if it is localized at the brain stem patients can get bulbar polio bulbar polio means cranial nerve nucleus is affected and patient get respiratory paralysis there are three stages of poliomyelitis acute poliomyelitis and starts recovering from the polio that is recovery stage and last is the residual stage where the patients are left with some deformities paralysis contractures and the final functional limitation so acute stage is something like any gastroenteritis to starts with the prodrome is just a gastroenteritis like a feature sometimes there may be the features of neck uh, irritation and some meningeal signs you may get but typically there will be acute flaccid patchy paralysis some group of muscles are involved and some are not it's not a symmetrical paralysis everywhere and that is how you differentiate with some other conditions but there is no sensory loss so you have to remember it's acute patchy flaccid paralysis of involved muscle with no sensory loss when it touch these muscles they are tender bladder and bowel is usually involved if there is a bulbar form there may be respiratory muscle paralysis 
The cranial nerves, if they are involved in the bulbar poliomyelitis, it may result in dyspnea and dysphagia.